collector for about five months now and it really works great but I think it could perform a little bit better because the suction isn't the highest especially with the smaller hose and that's because I think the impeller is a little bit too efficient so what I would like to do is a new, build a new impeller that's more aggressive so this is my old impeller and it was really designed to be efficient but because my motor has 3 horsepower it can also handle a much more aggressive design of impeller and this is the design I came up with. I only used 6 vanes instead of 8 this time and they are not sandwiched between two discs. It's a little bit bigger in diameter and also a tiny little bit taller. So at first I will make a new flange where I can attach the impeller to. Luckily this doesn't require a lot of wood so I could just use up some little scraps of birch plywood. There are actually leftover pieces from the dust collector building and I just glued them together to get a thicker piece. Now I am drilling the right sized hole to mount it on the shaft. And here I am cutting the notch out with the jigsaw where the key of the shaft will fit in. And here cutting it a little bit closer to its final size on the bandsaw. My old flange was mounted on the shaft with the key and the screw directly into the shaft and that worked really well. This time I used the same technique but I made a new shaft key and I can use the same metal plate that I used on my old flange. And now testing it for the first time. Well, it seems to work just fine. So here I set up to turn down the flange on the shaft. I'm using a little detail tool to take a minimum amount of wood because it's not the safest lathe setup with this piece spinning at about 3000 RPM. I had to be careful to not get a catch, but it worked just fine. Well, sanding wasn't really necessary, but it made it a little bit nicer. Now this face of the flange runs absolutely true. Now I couldn't turn it all the way down because of the key and so I have to remove this little bit of material by hand. And now after removing the part in the middle it lies completely flat on a table. Now that this is done I can start on working on the actual impeller. So first cutting out a disc. To make the circle nice and accurate I use a router compass. I cut about half the way through and then finished it on the router table. I drilled a small hole in the middle and so I'm able to rotate this disc on a small nail. And I also made a one-to-one -one template that tells me where I have to cut these grooves. And again I can use a router circle jig to cut these and then I can rotate it by 60 degrees, cut the next one and so on and that should make it quite accurate.
well, this method worked really good. And now I can get rid of the template. Now I can mount the disc to the flange and I can use the motor shaft to line it all up. But I had to remove the metal plate again to do this. Just put on the flange and insert the key and line up the key with the disc. Now I can attach it with six screws around here. And now I can put it in place the right way again. Making sure the key fits. And attach the screw. And now let's see how true it runs. Well, pretty good. So let's test it on the power. So the next thing to do are the veins. Uh, on my old impeller I used two layers of plywood that I had to steam and then glue in shape. It was very complicated and took a lot of time. This time I want to try to make them out of MDF. Here are my blanks. And hopefully I only have to glue them in shape. The radius of my bending form is slightly bigger than the one of my grooves. And this should compensate for the spring back. So let's have a look. Well, not bad. And the radius seems to fit. So now I just have to make this five times again. Now they are all done and I can cut them to the final size and shape. I want the wings to actually overhang the impeller base and so I have to cut out a small groove here and I can just mark it with a pencil and then cut it out with the bandsaw. I set up my bandsaw fence and a stop block to help me do this. To make them fit in the disc I had to file them down a little bit because they were really tight. But now they fit just fine. Next I'm gonna cut off the corners in the middle. Well, it's pretty much like what I drew up in CAD. Now I can glue all the veins in place. And making sure it's all square. Now let the glue set for a little bit and then make the next one. I used the motor shaft to find the heavy spots and I need to add this tiny little bit of weight right here. And that should fully balance it. Well I did the first test run off camera 
and little disaster happened one vein flew away but it didn't damage anything or hurt me the other ones are still okay so I just have to remake one and I also made more blanks in case something like this happens so let's do it after replacing them I also cut them a little bit smaller and added some support blocks to their backs Well, the second test run also was a little bit destructive, but never mind. I made two new reins, and this time I will also add this ring on top, and that should hold all the reins in place, and hopefully it is strong enough. I let the glue dry overnight and now I have to cut all the veins to exactly the same length and I'm gonna do this on the band so with my circle jig a few bearings on a screw and they fit into my impeller and so I can run each vein against the blade and make sure that they are all nice and even and 90 degrees I can balance the impeller on these two ball bearings that they are mounted on a threaded rod. So I have to add a little bit of weight right here. Add some little offcuts of MDF as weights. Got it all balanced now and now I can glue these blocks in place. The impeller is now finished and ready for next test run, but this time I want to try it inside the blower housing. And some of you may think I made it too big. I actually did because it doesn't fit inside and what I want to do is to cut out some notches so I can just fit it inside and the holes that are left by these are then covered up by the clips that hold on the motor mounting plate. But of course it can spin freely until it's completely inside the blower housing. And here are the new clips. I put some weather stripping onto them to better seal up the holes. And it seems to work. And it blows really hard. I'm gonna end this video right here as it is quite long already. I also did some more upgrades to the dust collector and you will see them in my next video. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.